I have been scratched here. It's always a cross. It leaves scars on you. One of the props flew across the room, like, at me. I don't know, I guess the ghosts are mad or something. Tonight, we're at one of the most haunted theaters in America. This place is unbelievably scary. It has a nickname, the Demon Theater. And that's for a reason. I definitely feel like there is evil in this building. All we want to do is talk to you. Over. Yeah, over there. You can scratch me, you can attack me, you can push me. Too easy. Son. Ow, dude. Let's go to hell, buddy. That's the fourth time now. Who is she? The butcher. <laughs> Mabel! No. Hello? I don't know what that was. Tonight, we're at one of the most haunted theaters in America. This place is unbelievably scary. It has a nickname, the Demon Theater, and that's for a reason. As you're about to see, this place is just filled to the brim with not only human spirits, but a number of inhuman spirits who already during our tour have made their presence known. Let me warn you, by watching this video, you may be opening yourself up to this sort of energy, and we're all on edge here. This is not an easy episode to film. It's Friday the 13th past midnight, but welcome to the Paranormal Files. This haunted house was extremely scary. So to talk for a second about the history, this building actually opened up as a movie theater um, decades ago. It was showing movies through the 60s and 70s. It's entertained lots of people. There were so many emotions in that theater while these films played. Sadness, happiness, anger. And then for a period of years, the theater went out of business. It was abandoned and eventually, the building was purchased and turned into a haunted house. Now, not like a ghost haunted house, but a haunted house attraction, which is actually known as one of the scariest, if not the scariest in the state of Maryland. This is an extreme haunt where people are jumping around from corners to scare you. There are extremely graphic and gruesome bloody scenes throughout the attraction. And that fear has really provided something negative or evil with an unending food or power bank that they can draw from or eat from in order to gain energy. As you're about to see in these interviews, this building is not a good place. It is not a happy place. It's in fact a very scary place that a lot of workers actually have left from and never returned to again because of their experiences. It was a privilege to be able to come investigate this location and some of the activity that you're about to see is gonna blow your mind. But first of all, we're gonna bring you to the interviews. Now we interviewed three different cast members who actively work there at the haunted house and their stories are brutal and extremely frightening and i don't think that i've ever heard stories quite like these when conducting interviews for the show so my name is alejo castellati i am uh, one of the managers here at laurel's house of horror i've been here pro i think since 2015 i'm definitely one of the oldest people that have been here now all right so i guess one of my my weirdest ghost stories actually happened within like the first I want to say like two weeks that I was actually working here. So at the time, obviously inside of an old movie theater, we have six auditoriums. At the time that we were doing all that, just when I started here, we only were using, I want to say like three or four out of the six. The one that we're actually standing in right now, which is our escape room theater, we were using a kind of like storage. It's actually one of our biggest auditoriums that we have. This one actually used to hold about 500 people. And basically we're using a storage. So. I was going back and forth between this one auditorium, going to like other ones and taking props and stuff like that into different areas. I was like one of the only people here, actually no, I was the only per person here, but um, it was like, I was like 12, 1, 1 p.m. in the afternoon, I was by myself, it was pretty dark. Fortunately at the time, we we're, we we're still pretty low budget, but even back then it was even worse. So we didn't have much lights actually throughout the whole building, especially here. I come into the actual escape room and, or the theater and it's completely vacant. So you can still see all the seats. Right now there's walls and stuff like that. But at the time, all the seats are still there. I walk in, it, what it looks like to me is like there's a person at the bottom of the theater. And it's like the silhouette of a like, person like walking from like left to right. And, and like in that moment, I, I'm like, someone broke in. I thought it was like a real person, but then that silhouette of a person jumps onto the screen and it kind of like expands. 
that point, I just ran out the uh, ran out the door. Call, I, yeah. What? <laughs> I I called the owner like trembling. I was like, mm, I need someone to be here when I'm here. I don't know if I can do this. Uh, mind you, this is like one of my first experiences like in my life. Uh, like I like when I grew up, I uh, my grandparents owned um, a slave quarter. But that it was like a house that was a slave quarters of the mansion that was on top of the hill. Lots of weird stuff happened there, but I've never had seen like an apparition or, or like ghosts or something like that. But that was my first time, and I was like couldn't come back in for like a good week. <laughs> That's uh, understandable. Yeah. Uh, the, uh, the second one that uh, uh, I tell all the time is so two years after that we had the actual escape rooms kind of established. Um, we were starting to build them and we had our first one. We had, it was like a Saturday night and um, usually a Saturday night all the the junkies, the people that get high and they all, they all want to come play in the escape room and they're like 11 o'clock people. Uh, so the last group comes in, the owner had just happened to actually stop by just to make sure that we're all cool and all good. And he notices that group is a little rowdy. So he's like, I'm going to watch you from the projector's booth, just make sure you're doing okay, because I was like game mastering and kind of helping with the game and all that fun stuff. It was like within the first 10, 15 minutes of the escape room, the, the customers do something stupid, one of them falls, and I start laughing and then I walkie-talkie because I've been looking up to the projector's window and I saw him uh, up there. Um, and I was like, did you see what these dumbass just did? And he's like, nobody, I'm not there, I'm actually downstairs in the concession. So for like the past 10, 15 minutes, I thought I was looking back and forth at the owner because it was very distinctive. You could, if you know Rich, he was always wearing uh, just like himself, but he always had a baseball hat. So it was one of the weirdest, like we, we call him the mimic. You'll, you'll hear Mike talk about him a lot because we have different experiences where pe we people, this ghost takes shape of people that we know, which is kind of weird. Like a doppelganger. Yeah. And actually, like a few, like, uh, what was it, this past summer, when it was, uh, we were doing construction, uh, so our owner, Rich, he passed away this past December, not this December, but last year. And as I was walking out, we have these glass windows in front of the door, and I see his reflection in the glass. I, and I was like, this, that was, it was kind of cool and sad at the same time to, like, be able to kind of see him as I'm leaving. Like, he's still here. Yeah. But. So what was your scariest experience? Definitely the first one. The first one with the shadow. And yeah. that was right in here. It was literally the screen right here. <laughs> wow. And yeah. it, it just grew to the size of the screen? Yeah, it grew to the size of the screen. By that point, I'd already turned. I don't know what it did after it kind of grew to size. And then I just... You were out of here by that Yeah. <laughs> I, I was like right by the, like the exit door at the top. So it was like it was like I was grabbing something. I looked down. And then I noticed and I was like, no. <laughs> When I'm here with people that are actually trying to like get scared or trying to get more experiences, things don't happen when they're around me. I, I'm, I'm, that's why I'm not gonna like hang out with you guys tonight because I want, you, I want you guys to get scared. And hope that they have fun with you. Well, thank you. But yeah, usually, damn, we gotta but, get you out of here. <laughs> yeah, so I'm like, if I'm usually here, nothing will happen. I, I think they're too comfortable around me at this point. At the beginning, it was kind of weird. It was, it was definitely palpable. You could literally around like 11 o'clock, if I wanted to even work in the. Uh, haunted house, you could feel that they literally were like, no, no, I need to uh, head back out. <laughs> yeah, wow. it was pretty thick. It's crazy how it's when someone's around spirits long enough, it turns into really like they just get comfortable around them and they don't have to really like show off mm -hmm. for that person anymore because the person's not going to react the same way that like a newcomer would. Right. So it's, it's kind of weird how that happens. Yeah. It's definitely people's energies. Yeah. Uh, I think, I mean, I don't think I have a really bad perspective on stuff, but like definitely if, if you have a weird energy, they will sense it and they'll kind of like, mm, we don't like you. Okay. Or they'll, uh, they'll, they'll play jokes on you. My One of my best friends, Jackie, she was our act manager a while back ago. And they would love to hide her keys. They would love to hide things. And we would literally like yell out into the escape rooms or the haunted house and be like, bring back those keys and like moments later we would kind of like find him like joking like I want to like I'm some weird area that like you would have never thought to put like That's weird crazy. little things <laughs> like that so it's very kiddish and then there's also from what other experiences weird malicious things but I don't know for me thankfully nothing <laughs> our keys don't get taken today yeah I would like to leave I would at like the end to leave of the night <laughs> <laughs> so all right. Anything else? I mean, those are the, probably the worst ones. I, the the newest one that I can probably tell you, since my friend Matt wasn't able to be here, um, uh, we were just finishing up the hotel. I think you guys just filmed in there. Um, there in the first area of the lobby where the stairs are at. Um, he was on top of there fixing some of the music and setting up the the, the sound system for in there, and I was just happened to go past him and going up the stairs 
into the concessionarium. And turn around for a second, and we both see the light on top of us fall onto him. And apparently earlier, prior to that, I wasn't there for it, but it, apparently someone threw a Sharpie at him. It was kind of weird, because mind you, the, the, the light bulbs are 25 feet in the air, and it was on, and it unscrewed and fell. <laughs> hmm. A little weird, because I mean, it's pretty high. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you wouldn't want that to hit you. Yeah, I think they didn't hurt anyone, but it was just, it was weird. I mean, Matt got a little freaked out at the ghost because Matt, like, actually, like, says goodbye, hello to the ghost, mm -hmm. tells, like, tells him when to hang out or, or not and stuff like that. I'm not that nice with the ghost, but, <laughs> which, which, so he got mad and he, like, was like, ghosts, I don't like that. <laughs> so, I wouldn't it, like it either. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so after that first interview, I was thinking, how the hell is it possible to see a shadow figure in front of you that runs and, and expands across the entire front of a movie screen? I mean, that is massive if you imagine how big the screens are in movie theaters. That shadow figure was gigantic. And obviously, that thing wanted to scare somebody. It, it wasn't a, a positive interaction. It wasn't trying to reach out for help or, or try to ask the person who saw it something. This figure wanted to scare them. And that's when we decided we needed to hear another perspective. And this employee's uh, experiences in the theater are even more shocking and even more frightening when you consider what might be causing them. Hi, I'm Mandy Gibson. I've been with Laurel's House of Horror for about six to seven years. Um, my first experiences here were like footsteps behind me. It's freaky, they'll touch your hair. I get scratched. Uh, I have been scratched here. Um, it's always a cross and it's super fun because it leaves scars on you. These are, this was the first time they scratched me. You can see the upside down cross. This. Show that one more time. Let me focus on that. Wow. That's insane. And this is the second time they got me. Oh my God. Um, what's kind of crazy about it is the second time they got me, I was in a meeting. There was like eight of us. I looked down because I had a burning sensation and clear as day that giant cross thing was scratched into me. No explanation. Don't do it myself. <laughs> um, I'm super connected to the cabinet for some reason. Everybody hates the cabinet. I love the cabinet. I put people's hair in the cabinet. Um, we don't know where the cabinet came from but everybody that comes near the cabinet is super petrified of the cabinet, doesn't want to be by it. They want it closed. I like to open it. Um, nobody wants to get near it. Um, we have a special needs actor that comes. She knows nothing about this world. She came in and was like, I don't like that thing in the corner of the room because this was her scene. She picked up on it automatically. Um, um, they touch, they've scratched other people here. I think when they, they touch my hair, it's creepy to me. I don't know. God, I don't know. You kind of get immune to it, but you kind of don't. Um, so I was walking through the haunt with Alejo, who's another manager, um, and I was, I was frozen. I couldn't move. I couldn't do nothing. All I could do was scream for Alejo. I looked up. There was handprints, and like, like somebody was on their knees and hands, and it, but it's sealing right there. I could not move until Alejo came. That might be the creepiest thing that's happened to me because I was paralyzed. Like, I could not move. So you saw something on its hands and knees? Yes. On and the wall? It was like on the ceiling. Hmm. So what do you think is haunting this place? I think many things. Um, I think not some nice things. I think um, past family members are here. Um, I think there's definitely some kind of mimic thing here because it will take people's forms. Um, so many things. And what do you think is the darkest? Whatever is connected to the cabinet, I think is the darkest thing here. Really? Yes. Just because people don't like it? Um, the little boy. The little boy is the creepiest thing here. I haven't even talked about him. <laughs> um, so there's a little boy. A couple of us have seen him. I do not think he is human because when you see him, the feeling you get it's not good and like he has no eyes like his eyes are almost like not there he is creepy he plays hide and seek like you'll always see him pop up from stuff or around stuff um he's the scariest thing here 
And you don't think it's human? I don't. No. Not with the feeling I get when I've seen it. That's great. Yeah. Hopefully something pops out and jump scares yeah, you Jesus. again. <laughs> I'm already jumpy enough, man. Don't need a little demon kid f***ing jumping out. There's also a girl. Oh. oh. A ghost girl? I've never seen the girl, but a lot of people have. I've just seen the little creepy whatever that thing is, boy. And I guess, other than this area, what's the most, to you, like, active area? Upstairs. Really? Um, I think upstairs because that part of the theater, the butcher shop is below you, and then the windows that they used to have the cameras in connects to all the hot spots down here. And you'll get to see when y'all go upstairs. It's super, super creepy up there. Okay. <laughs> well... I think we're good. So the cabinet area is obviously a place that we wanted to fixate on that night, a place that we wanted to dig into and investigate. But when you have a place that is spawning these gigantic shadow figures running at you, um, people are getting scratched in upside down crosses, people are being shoved, pushed, and people are seeing, I'm talking visually seeing full bodied apparitions, little children, little girls, shadow men. I mean, the list goes on and on and on of things that people have seen in this location, but we still didn't have all the information we were looking for. So we wanted to talk to someone else. So my name's Brianna and I've been um, with Laurel's House of Horror for, well, since this Halloween season um, and I have had lots and lots of spooky things happen to me here. Um, I guess the first one would be um, one of the first weeks that I was here, I came in and uh, went to put my stuff in my scene in the town and all the house lights were on and it was all light in there and there was nobody else in there. And as I was bent over uh, to like put my backpack away, when I stood back up, I saw like, the shadow of somebody big and hulking standing in the doorway of um, the room where that cabinet is that everybody talks about. When I actually looked, there was nobody there. But uh, I've had people um, who talk about like the spirit that's in the town. And when they describe it, a lot of the times their posture goes like this. And as soon as uh, I saw the first person do that, I was like, that that is what I saw. Really? Yes. Um, just uh, just big and hulking and standing with the shoulders like to the front. Scary looking. <laughs> it's crazy because that's what I was seeing. Yeah, you were right just there, seeing something like that. Right there camera. in that doorway. Yeah. Yeah, during our ghost hunt, I actually um, saw uh, something peeking out of there. Uh, 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 pretty much the whole time I was sitting in here, something would kind of peek in and then peek back and then peek in and peek back. Um, and we were sitting in here in the complete dark, so... And so I'm in the town, um, that's my like home scene, and it's generally one of the more like haunted scenes um, the, in, in, the, in the haunt that everybody talks about. Um, let's see, I've had that, and then on, I like to sit on the stairs, um, and when I'm sitting on the stairs waiting for a group, a lot of times I'll feel somebody coming down the stairs behind me, and then I'll turn around and there's nobody there. Or there's been a couple of times where I've turned around and for like a split second, there is somebody standing at the top of the stairs and then there isn't. Let's see, I've had th things thrown at me. Oh, the first time um, was there was a big group of people that had gone through. I was in the stairwell and um, there's a long hallway and when I was looking down that long hallway, I saw a piece of drywall like fly out like somebody had like punched it or kicked it out like it flew across that hallway. And so I was thinking somebody like the guy in the last group had hung back and like, I don't know, it was like destroying stuff. So I came around like swinging like, hey. And when I came around, I came face to face with one of the other actors who was also going, hey, like <laughs> what? And we were like, what? What? Was that you? Did you? did you see that? <laughs> and we were both like, yeah, I, I saw it. And then um, another time during the Christmas haunt, me and two people were talking in the kitchen um, and there was two actors like just outside of the kitchen and I was like just inside the kitchen. And in between that space, like one of the props flew across the room like at me. And um, one of the, the other actor was like, <laughs> he was like, what was that? And I was like, I, d I don't know. I guess the ghosts are mad or something. At, th at this point, I'm used to it. <laughs> so there's something like violent here. 
Yeah. Like moving, throwing, banging. It's kind of bizarre. Yeah, something that uh, will tell you if it's not happy. I don't know if it was connected or not, honestly, but when I went out later with everybody and I mentioned that story, Mandy said that somebody had put a crystal in her cabinet and she said, that's why they're mad. <laughs> and I was like, well, I was like, I don't know. I was like, I'll take your word for it because they were mad. <laughs> so what do you think it is that's haunting this place? Um, I don't know. I think it's I think it's a multitude of things. I think some of them are non-human and I think some of them are human, but I don't know. I, I've seen so much that I know that something's here and something wants our attention, that's for sure. <laughs> um, I know, me too. Anything else? One time, I mean, like, I see lots of little shadows and stuff, but I kind of pass those off. Um, but one time, um, I had somebody who was like, uh, who's always in my town, and they love acting in my town. Um, and when they came through to use, uh, to like, when they came through and they weren't in that scene, I saw a hand reach out of the wall, like after them. Like I was waving at them like, oh, bye my friend, bye bye. And as I was waving at them, a hand like came out of, in that same actual hallway that I keep talking about, this hand came out of the wall and like reached after them like this, like kind of waving the same way I was. And that one, I felt so insane. I was like, there is no way I just saw a hand reach out of that wall. But you did. But I did. <laughs> <laughs> wow. This place is going to be interesting. I am very ready for this place, man. <laughs> it's definitely an interesting place. <laughs> what do you think is the spookiest area in here? Um, for sure, the town and pretty much everywhere that I've been talking about is in between that, that cabinet room. There's... Um, because there's, so there's the stairwell and the hallway that I've been talking about, and that leads into the cabinet room. And then when you go through the cabinet room to get, you get to the kitchen, which is the other area that's really active. So those three rooms are very active for sure. So holy shit, after all three of those stories, you can't not believe that there's something dark in this theater. Now I'm a very honest paranormal investigator. I would tell you guys if I didn't think that a location had some sort of negative energy, as you know, I personally tend to focus on those places with more dark or negative energy and history because I feel like it, it almost breeds the most intense hauntings. And this sort of stuff doesn't really scare me anymore, so I'm ready for whatever these things will throw at me. But, I mean, when you have something that's dropping lights near people, it's throwing stuff at people, it's scratching people, it's showing itself to people, that's how you can tell that these entities are powerful. And whatever's there in the theater, or however many of them are in the theater, the energy there is not only strong, but it's violent. And that's to me the most interesting type of haunting when you're getting evidence beyond just a simple DR60 or spirit box and you're actually seeing and experiencing and hearing these poltergeist activities, it's crazy. And as you're about to see during our next and final interview, when we learn about the history of the theater and take a walking tour through the haunted houses, this thing would make its presence known before we even began investigating. My name is Mike. I have been giving tours here at the Laurels House of Horrors. Uh, this is actually my first year doing it. I was contacted by them last October to lead the paranormal tours here and um, I also run a channel, Charm City Paranormal. That's how they found me. The very first time I ever walked into this place, I, all the hair on my body stood up. My facial hair, everything. It was an absolutely electric feeling, unlike anything that I'd ever felt on prior investigations. They gave me a tour of the building, showed me various hot spots and, and haunted attraction areas, and every single spot that I went to, something happened. I would hear a voice, something would touch me, I would see things, smell things, feel things, and I knew by the end of that walkthrough that without a doubt this is probably one of the most active places that I've ever been to. And you told us earlier that this is the scariest place you've ever oh, been to. Oh, abs absolutely. I've, I've been all over the East Coast, I've been out Midwest, I've done some pretty notorious locations, and honestly, this is like a, a hidden gem. Yeah, I'm telling you. It's all over the place. It, it's nonstop here. Um, I don't think it's really so much what happened here. I think a lot of 
what goes on here as a result of events that have occurred around the land. Laurel's very old. It was originally established as a slave trading post in the late 1700s. And what's going on? There's movement over there in the bathroom area. Does that, those stairs up there, is that what leads up to like everything? Yeah, that goes up to the control room. Oh, yeah. That's where I had my, well, we can talk about that later. Yeah. Anyways. <laughs> um, this, this town was originally established as a slave trading post in the late 1700s, and it eventually grew so large that it was uh, indexed as a city. So, I mean, you got to think back then, you know, slavery and, and all, everything that occurred in that time period, it was very gruesome. People were treated very poorly. Who knows what happened on this particular plot of land or what happened even around it. There was also the Laurel Sanitarium that was built directly behind the building on 4th Street in 1905. And it was also extremely notorious. Uh, a lot of heinous things happened to patients, forced sterilizations, lobotomies. The head doctors were also incredibly uh, violent and treated patients less than human. There's been documented murders of patients being hurt by caretakers, uh, patients committing suicide. We've had tons of EVPs and devices go off when discussing patients in this building. In 1931, Dr. Coggins' wife, Mabel Coggins, um, unfortunately took her own life in one of the wards, and we have had her come through here, and it's almost every time that she gets brought up, activity seems to spike in the building. Sometime in the late 50s, late 60s, there was a, an inn about four blocks down the road. It was called Oak Crest Inn. It was a pretty notorious bar. A lot of like criminals, gang members, bikers, things like that used to go and hang out down there. And um, it was owned by two brothers, Sam and Roy Ellum. One night they're sitting in the bar after hours having drinks. And um, I guess they got into like an argument or an altercation. And Sam threatened to shoot his brother Roy. So Roy went to the back of the bar, grabbed a gun, went back to the front of the bar and shot his brother uh, right in the face and turned himself in. The reason why I say this is because during one of our walkthroughs, we actually had the name Samuel come through the spear box. And I'm not sure if that's him or if it's another Samuel. Um, there's a serial killer that actually came through here. He's actually named Samuel Little. Uh, he has reportedly like one of the largest kill counts in American history. And one of his victims was murdered here in Laurel about four miles away. It was a 20 year old girl that he had picked up in Texas and they took a Greyhound up here. I think they were heading to New York or something like that. And the Greyhound stopped here in Laurel and um, they decided to like go for a walk or something. And he eventually coerced her to go back in the woods for, you know, reasons and instead of doing what he had coerced her into doing he strangled her and left her there well she actually woke up she she wasn't dead and he chased after her she ran away chased her down tackled her strangled her again that time he killed her um, and then she was left there for several months a hunter actually came across her bones and I don't know if it's Samuel Little or like something pretending to be Samuel Little or Sam Ellum that was the inn owner down the street, but Samuel or Sam, whoever it is, is very active in this building. I was also told very recently, back in October, that a local that used to come here all the time and hang out here when it was an active theater as a teenager, used to come across uh, a lot of people overdosing in this building. There's also been a lot of reported shootings in and around the theater. On top of that, you have tons of objects that come from old antique shops or uh, auction or estate sales. So there could be attachments to the objects that are in the haunt. There is a very notorious uh, insane asylum 10 minutes away from here, and it's still standing. It's abandoned, but it's called Forest Haven. There was a, a previous haunt in the area that only lasted for about a year and once they shut down, they had permission to store all of their props inside of Forest Haven. And they sat there for a very long time. They were eventually donated to this haunt here. So there's also props from Forest Haven, which is also an extremely haunted place. It's, it's one of the most haunted places that I've ever been to, other than here. 
they're all they're littered throughout the haunt. Um, you combine all of these things on top of fear-based, anxiety-based, negative energy that is just pouring into this place over the last nine years. I mean, thousands of people come here to get scared. They're on edge, they're anxious, they're nervous. All that same energy, it, it doesn't, it's gonna soak into the walls and it's gonna manifest and create things that we don't understand. Um, it's just, there's so much going on here. You can't really narrow it down to just one thing. I mean, yeah, there, there have been events that have occurred in the building. That was in the building. That was that way. I gotta stop the interview for a second. I have never heard so many f***ing noises. I'm hearing this during the interview, I mean, bro. Me and you are literally looking back at each other every I like have 30 seconds. Goosebumps up and down I'm my body. Thuds man. coming from up here. Yes. I mean, I. I Movement? Just Dude, I'm I getting heard. goosebumps right now. It's like something yeah, just coming like, I'm trying to focus on the interview and like think about things to talk, and it's distracting the shit out of me. Do you no, see I, this, Connor? My hair. All of it is on edge yeah. right now. <laughs> oh, yeah. Like, it, right just now. Yeah. This is freaky shit here. Oh, this is yeah. a very scary building. I'm like freaked to investigate, actually. Yeah. Um, anyway, sorry. No, no, you're okay. It's it's a I lot to, to. I mean, whatever that was was like sliding. Before yeah, it sounded like something yeah. drug. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I know. Trust me. This I've been, I've done about, I would say, twenty investigations in this building, uh, both the tours as well as privates, and honestly, like, you you don't get used to it. You never get used to it. Doesn't matter how many times you come in here, how many times you see the same rooms, the same props, the same building. It's different in here every single time. Um, it's extremely active. Again, it's one of the most haunted places that I've ever been to, and you would never expect it. You would think, oh, it's a haunted house. You know, people are just scared. They're on edge. They're they're seeing things, hearing things, feeling things. This is incredibly haunted, and the history that surrounds this land over the last two, three hundred years, on top of recent events combined with the fear-based energy that gets dumped into this building on a daily or weekly basis when the haunt is in operation, I I don't know how to process it all. I really don't. It's just so much to take in. So I think also we skipped over the fact, so this building was a movie theater. Yes. Can you talk about the history of the actual building itself? Oh, absolutely. Um, so the building was originally built in 1966. It was uh, a twin cinema. It opened as Laurel Twin Cinema. And it was a very popular movie theater here. Everybody came here. It was very cheap to watch movies here. I think they mostly did like reruns of already popular movies that had circulated out of theaters. So a lot of teenagers and stuff would hang out here. Um, and then over the years, in the 70s and the 80s, you know, when, when drugs became really prominent in the area, people would come here and they would there was constant overdoses, there was fights, there was feuds, so you have that also happening here. The building did eventually shut down in the early 90s, and then it reopened as a Bollywood cinema, and it was only open for maybe 10 or 12 years. It eventually closed in 2009, and this place sat totally abandoned and empty for four years um, until Rich bought it in 2013. He bought it, turned it into the haunt for the first year. It was super successful. So from 2013 up until now, it has been a haunted attraction. But I, nobody knows what happened in here for the four years that it was abandoned. Um, you know, people could have passed away in the building. Uh, who knows? I mean, there's no history about it. There's no records. It's hard to get land records on this place. We just know it as a movie theater. Okay, well, you want to start walking around? Yeah. I think we should start with the death toilet. Oh, so after wow. learning the history of the theater, it was really compelling. I had no idea that somebody from the haunted house had actually died in the theater while it was an active haunted house. I had no idea that there were people that may have overdosed or, you know, drug addicts who may have lost their lives inside of that building back in the day. And the history with the asylums and everything in that immediate area is so intriguing. I mean, not only is this a haunted house, but it's a haunted house, an old theater, and the proximity to all these other places makes this a, a paranormal playground almost. But now is the time when we headed to the walking tour. And once again, 
This is where things would take a drastic and sharp turn. So one of the first stops is the men's restroom. The original haunt first, and then I'll take you through the newly built haunt because this is where most of the activity happens. I've done a few investigations on the new side, but I haven't gotten quite as much as I get over here. So it's, it's colder through. here. Yeah, it's gotten a lot colder. Um, do you remember what I said to you earlier? Around 10, 30, 11 o'clock, things start to change in the building. It's what is it, 1045? 11.03, actually. Oh, great. And we've had EM pumps running around this whole location, the whole time we've just been setting yeah. up and yeah. Yeah. doing some walkthroughs, so. It's I, charged. I got here around 4 p.m. and immediately set them up. So they've been running since 4 p.m. Right. Yeah. Good set yeah, no, no problem. EM pump. Yep. This guy wants us to get <laughs> scratched. Yeah. Well, scared at least. So <laughs> when you come through the haunt initially, when you're getting the, uh, the haunted house experience, you walk through Voodoo. This is the voodoo hallway, and these are real Haitian voodoo symbols. They actually got a book, and they started painting symbolism on the wall to create like an authentic feel without actually researching what the symbols were. Now, I'm not familiar with voodoo, voodoo, but I know that it was born from oppression and slavery, and it was used to cast, most of the time, hexes and curses on the plantation owners, the slave owners, to make them fall ill, to have bad things, bad omens happen to them. And because they didn't do any research on the symbols that they were painting on these walls, we have no idea what any of this stuff means. It could be good, it could be bad, it could be a mix of the two, but um, this is one of the most active areas in the haunt. When you come through here, we have had all of our devices trigger at the exact same time. We've had cat balls go off on command in this hallway for an hour, two hours at a time. Uh, this is also the area where Mandy saw the handprints and the knees on the ceiling. It was right here in this room. This is also the same room. I was here two weeks ago and we heard the growler, which is like some entity or whatever. I, I don't know what it is or who it is, but it sounded like a motorcycle revving its engine. And I ignored it until my other guy that investigates with me pointed it out. So we all heard it, but we ignored it. Well, two of us did. And this is, this is the area where people get touched, grabbed, uh, scratched. Again, devices trigger like crazy in this hallway. It is very, very active back here. And I think maybe the symbolism has something to do with it. I could be wrong. I just know that most of the energy that gets charged through here is probably from people coming through because this is the initial beginning of the haunt. So like everybody's on edge, everybody's nervous. I think a lot of that energy gets dumped into that hallway. This place is genuinely really scary, man. I agree. Like, it is f***ing cold in here, dude. It's freezing. And it we were just started out. getting cold. We were... We just check, walked through here. Check the footage. I was sweating my ass off when we were in here like 20 minutes ago. And the heat's on, by the way. Yeah. It set to it's 73. So this is Artie's. This is Artie's butcher shop. So this is where the scare actor and Rich's uncle, Artie Staub, would, would come in. He'd set up as the butcher, stand behind there, scare people. This was his area. Um, this is typically the first stop in our paranormal tours. We come in here because it's spacious, but it's also, in my opinion, the best place to get evidence as far as devices go. Mabel, Artie, and Rich all come through in this room in particular. If you put a REM pod in this area of the floor, it will go off on command. If you put devices on the counter, they will go off on command. We've had three, four, five devices all light up and max out at the same time in this room and it'll continue to do that until you leave they really like interaction in this room um, they also like to touch you in this room a lot and make themselves known we've had uh, instances where people coming on the tours have seen a large man standing in this doorway here or walking by this doorway which there's nowhere for you to go to the left here it's it's a wall what is that the buzzing? No, the cold. I, I don't know. I feel it right now. Do you now. feel that, Connor? Look, if you come actually right here, you can feel a hard draft right here. Yeah, but the f***ing curtains aren't moving. I know. And it wasn't this cold, what, 30 minutes ago? 
It's like very yeah. cold. Yeah, it's ice cold in here, and that's the thing. It, the later it gets into the night, the more intense this building gets. It, it's, I don't know. It's active all day. You can come in here at three p.m., three a.m. It doesn't matter. But it just seems like that window between eleven p.m., twelve a.m. The whole energy in this building shifts. It just changes. Hmm. Um, there was actually one instance where one of my other uh, investigators and I, we were in here probably three, four o'clock in the morning. It was after a tour. And it was just the two of us. We were standing in here. We turned off all the lights and we set a REM pod in the floor. And the only light we had casting in this whole room was the red light from the REM pod. I was standing right here and Matt was standing here. And I'm staring into that doorway, just trying to see if I see anything, feel anything. I watched a shadow rise up from the floor, put its arms out like this, and charge at me. And it, like, it looked like it was going to football tackle me. And I, I had a flashlight already in my hand, and I like aimed it up and, and shone it at the door, and it disappeared. Jesus. And that's I've never experienced that anywhere else. I mean, I watched this thing basically manifest up out of the floor and go like this and then just like try to tackle me like a linebacker. It was bizarre. This room is definitely one of the more active rooms throughout the entire haunt. I don't know, again, if it's Artie, if it's Mabel, if it's Rich, if it's all three of them, if it's something else pretending to be them, but you get a lot in this room. It is so, it's cold. freezing. Dude. Yeah, there's a huge draft coming through here right now. So the next area I'm gonna take you to is the hospital area. Um, I've had a lot of weird things happen in here. I've seen the little boy more here in this area than anywhere else. Like you see him a lot in the theater, but I've, I've personally seen him more in this area than anywhere else. And here you get a lot of talking, a lot of disembodied voices. If you're recording or filming anything in here, you get a, ooh. You get a lot of uh, EVPs. I just saw like a whole person standing in front of me. Um, I just watched somebody like take one large step in front of me. It kind of threw me off. It's, yeah, I, I'm telling you. This, let me tell the camera. This dude is really f***ing good at freaking a person out. I'm yeah. not trying to. <laughs> I swear. Everything this guy says is terrifying. I'm just, God yeah, damn. that's really, that's the reality of this place, man. Um, it's it's an incredibly active building. F Something's with us right now. I, can I know, tell you I that. feel, I have felt it the whole time. Um, I, I'm like, every time I round a corner in here, I keep seeing it like, you see the leg or something like that. Yeah, I don't even want to look behind me because I keep feeling like there's someone following. They They left all the show lights and stuff on, by the way. <laughs> And it just hurt somebody. So this is the nice. actual like hospital area. This is where the doctor resides. Oh. And I don't know oh, God. if it's irony or if it's just placement, but I just find it odd that this being the hospital area is also the very back of the theater, which is the closest to where Laurel Sanitarium was. Laurel Sanitarium beyond this wall is, was about seven, 800 feet away. So we're like as close to the original property as it gets. Um, we've done, I, I don't really take people back here on the tours just because of like it being a tight space, but I've done a few investigations in this particular area and I tend to see the little boy peek from around this uh, frame here. So It'll, who's the little boy? We don't know. The little boy, I've heard brief stories about him through actors that work here, managers, things like that. There's no history or records that I was able to find of a little boy passing away in the area or in the theater. We, I don't think he's human. A lot of people don't think that he's human. I've seen him personally, uh, black sunken in eyes, white face. You only see like the cheekbones, the bridge of the nose, the forehead. Like you don't see a full face, you just see features of a face. But he's about waist height and he, when he appears, he definitely gives off this very like ominous, sort of like oppressive feeling. Like you just feel, you feel fear. I don't, I don't know any other way to describe it. I just, I feel very on edge when he's here, or when I see him, or I hear him. Um, but he doesn't appear that often. But you'll know when he does. Hmm. And then it just it continues through. Um, again, a lot of disembodied voices, shadow figures just a general feeling of uneasiness. I don't know if it's if it has anything to do with the weather, 
I've only been working here since it's been cold. I haven't experienced this place in the summertime yet, but I know that cold weather tends to have an effect on activity and energy. But I just, I never feel easy back here. I mean, you don't feel easy anywhere in this place really, but for me personally, this area just has always made me very uncomfortable. This is the theater attraction. This is one of the only original rooms left in the entire theater. When Laurel Twin Cinema was built, it had two large screening rooms and they added these two later on. That actually brings up a good point. Um, when they were renovating this place, because they talked about a little boy and a little girl, um, I believe it was in the 70s, they were adding two more screening rooms, and this was one of the screening rooms that they were adding. Apparently, one of the foremen, uh, he had his daughter here, and while they were building, supposedly an accident happened. She was very young. I think she was between the ages of like six and 10. Uh, there was an accident with her on the site, and unfortunately she died during the construction here. She is seen and heard very frequently in the building. You'll probably hear her more than you see her. It's very rare that you see her, but you hear her all the time here, especially in this theater and back towards like the cabinet town area, all the time. You'll just hear a little girl talking or laughing or calling out your name. Shadow figures and disembodied voices are very common in this room, particularly along this wall here and that doorway. The very first time that I ever came here, three of us saw the same shadow standing against this wall right here in between these two wall pieces here. And it just slowly like crept against the wall and then slithered around the door frame. And all three of us watched it. This is also the, the room where I saw the little boy for the first time. I saw him in that doorway over there. I was standing down by the piano and I just stared into the doorway. And this is the only time that this has ever happened to me on an investigation. Almost every time that you see things, you see them out of the corners of your eyes, and then you go to look over at it and it's gone. I watched this little boy's face come out of the darkness and it just kept going like this, in and out. And that's, that's all it did. And it, we stared at each other for 20 seconds, 30 seconds, until I, I felt forced to look away. And I didn't say anything to anybody initially. I waited until we got out of this room and further in when I told one of the managers, I said, I think I saw the little boy. And that's the only time it's happened. I still haven't seen him since, um, other than like peeking, you know, like a little head height, which makes me assume that it's the little boy. But seeing him in here was probably one of the scariest moments that I've had so far working in this place. You will hear a lot of banging, doors slamming, things being drugged and moved around through the rest of the haunt if you sit in this room in total silence in the dark. It's very active in here. This is also one of my favorite rooms. You can feel it in here. Yeah, it's, it's very heavy in here. Most people don't last in here. In fact, one of the tours that I was giving, I'll never forget it. It was like one of the last ones. It was like the fourth or fifth to last tour. Had a full crowd of people here. It was a husband and a wife couple. They came in, they were skeptics, you know, they were making jokes and they didn't really take it serious. And that's fine, I, I totally get that. You know, people have different beliefs and viewpoints on this. And most of the people that come on these tours want to experience this stuff for the first time. So, you know, I, I said, you, we might have stuff happen. We might have nothing happen. Just kind of treat it like fishing. Just cast your line and wait and see. Uh, we were all sitting here in the theater and the husband and wife were sitting in those two seats right there. I was sitting on the stage facing everybody and we had devices sitting out and we were talking and, and we had a spirit box running, REM pod, things like that. They got real quiet when we got in this room and out of nowhere, in the middle of like a statement or something I was making, the wife just starts crying and I'm like, are you okay? She goes, no, I'm, I'm having a, like a horrible, horrible panic attack right now. I don't know what's wrong with me. I'm freaking out. She started shaking violently and she goes, can, can I go to the front and just calm down for a minute? One of the other staff members was with me. I said, absolutely. Like he'll, you know, escort you back up to the concession stand. You can just hang out there, catch your breath. When you're ready, come back. They left. They were here for one hour. The tour lasts for three hours. They lasted for one and they left. Didn't see him again. So this room is very intense. It scares a lot of people. I already saw something when we were they were doing a little showcase of some of the lights in here, and I saw something standing in that doorway 
that Mike's talking about over there. And it was like it was flashing. But I was checking to make sure that it wasn't just shadows from some of the figures, and it wasn't. I'm, like, terrified of this place already. I feel like something keeps, like, grabbing the back of my leg, too. Oh, yeah, I've been feeling that all night. It's it's very common here, too. They'll grab you, touch you, flick your hair, pull your shirt, scratch you, push you, leave bruises on you. It's, um, it's, it's a very intense place. So let's keep going. We'll go through the rest of it. We haven't even gotten to the most intense part yet. <laughs> Um, so there's also, there's actor doors throughout the entire haunt. It just helps them navigate through the place easier. And you'll hear those doors slam. Hmm. That's not fucking scary at all. Yeah. This is known as the town. This is, this area is the first time I ever heard the growler. My very first walkthrough of this building, first time ever being in here. All the lights were on, the, the bright lights, not the show lights. And as soon as we walked through that doorway over in that corner, I heard what sounded like something growl at me. And it, there was no questioning it, guessing it. It was a super deep, super loud, angry growl. And I asked if anybody else had heard it, and they were like, no, we didn't hear anything. But it's very common that it happens here. I like the design of this room. <coughs> yeah, yeah, I really it like it. It feels friendly. It's not. It's really not. I, I would consider this like the second most active area, just the whole town in general. Uh, this is also where I saw what looked like a person in a black morph suit standing in that doorway. In fact, <laughs> oh, oh, God. God. I didn't realize this, oh, <laughs> this is an opening right there. I thought, oh, wow, you scared Sorry. me. You scared okay, wait, me. Mike, repeat that story. So this is the uh, this is the area where I saw the like. I guess the black morph suit shadow figure. I was walking through here with a friend one time. It was just the two of us in the entire building. I was taking him on like a, just like a private guided ghost hunt or whatever. We rounded this corner, got to about right here where you can see that doorway. And I, when I turned just to kind of do a quick glance, it looked like somebody in a black morph suit standing there like this. And it wasn't a shadow. It wasn't flat. It didn't, Looked like something out of the corner of my eye. I mean, I looked at this thing directly. It had depth. It had like, it looked like the light was reflecting off of the cloth of the morph suit. I've never seen anything like that, never. Usually you see shadows or shadow figures. It's kind of flat, grayish, maybe like almost black, but not quite black. And this thing was solid black. It was, it had depth. You could see its shoulders, its back, everything. And it. That absolutely terrified me. I still, like, I get kind of anxious just thinking about it because I now, every time I come through here, I look back there just to see if I see it again. And then this moves over into dining slash kitchen area. Oh, God. This is everyone's least favorite spot on the tour. Um, people tend that. to experience a lot of physical things in this area, sickness, headaches, lightheadedness. We had somebody almost pass out back here one time. There was also a scare actor that works here. They were doing sort of like a private staff ghost hunt in this room. It was five or six of them. She was sitting over in one of these chairs here and just went from like normal having a conversation to breaking down and crying hysterically until she left this room. I don't know what's up with this cabinet. Um, I don't know where it came from. I don't know why it's here. I think it was, I think it was like a, one of Alejo's family members and I think that they brought it from their house. For some reason Mandy is incredibly drawn to this cabinet. Uh, she feels the need to leave it open. I, I don't, I, initially I felt weird about it. Um, one of the first times I ever came here, I think it was my follow-up trip here. I had come, come here to do a tour and then I came back like a few days later to start shooting B-roll and do interviews with the staff. They were telling me how they like to keep the cabinet closed. I came back, it was closed. I got curious and I thought, it can't be that big of a deal. Um, I, when I opened it, I heard like a vibration noise come out of it. Like it sounded like something was vibrating on the wood and this like awful smell came out of it. It was putrid. It didn't smell like sulfur, but it just, it smelled rotten. It smelled like something had died in the cabinet. And it was only for 
two or three seconds and then the smell went away. And I haven't done that since. The cabinet, as you can see, is open. I think it just permanently stays open now. This room is very physical. Like I'm actually, I'm getting a headache right now. And I was fine until we walked back here. But that corner, every time somebody has ever sat in that corner, um, they've either gotten sick, they've gotten headaches, they've asked to leave, uh, they start getting aggressive. A lot of negative emotion is back here for whatever reason. This, this room is just incredibly charged. And I think this is also where one of the scare actors, Brianna, sees a large imposing shadow figure standing in this doorway when she's over on the other side of the room acting. And it's, mm. it's solid, like you can't see through it. So a lot happens back here. It's just, I don't know how you guys are feeling right now, but my head hurts really I'm bad. I have a headache too. My head, it, like right here, kinda. I was fine until we got back here. As soon as we walked around and got back to this area, just my head started thumping. So I don't know. Um, you know, I'm not a fan of all these damn bodies everywhere. Yeah, they're everywhere. And this this fridge, uh, they used to have an actor hide in here and like jump out and scare people, but it kind of became a hazard because the door. But when this door would close. Um, people would hear it squeak open or it would slam shut when nobody was back here. So we might hear this move at some point. Like that. Yeah. It's, it's, it's terrible. Roby Roo. So, ooh. hey, buddy. This is the graveyard. This is also where I saw the little girl for the first time. So there's. I don't know if it's the little girl from the accident or if it's someone else, but I came into the church area doing the walkthrough and I rounded this corner here. When I got down to the, the skeleton hallway or whatever that's over here, yeah, watch your head. Oh, by the way, this is a real painting from this guy's house. They got this in an estate sale. This is his painting and his pew. Really? Yeah, this isn't like a prop or anything. This is Warren C. Johnson. And he's dead? I, I would assume so, yeah. This was painted in, I think, 1967. I heard that too. The squeak? Yeah. yeah like know. a door opening. Uh Hello? I don't know what that was. I've, that's never happened. Yo, is someone in here? No, nobody's in here. The whole building's locked. We're the only three in here. Everybody left. There's no... F I'm... I swear to you, Colin... I'm, I'm scared someone just broke in. Nobody broke in. Those doors are double bolted and locked. Like you have to reach up and flip like a latch lock. No, nobody's there's in no, here. There's no way, Mike. We can go look right now yeah. if you'd like to. Yeah. I, I would assume so, yeah. This was painted in, I think, 1967. What was that? I heard that too. The squeak? Yeah. yeah like know. a door opening. Uh -huh. Yeah. Hello? I, I would assume so, yeah. This was painted in, I think, 1967. What was that? I heard that too. The squeak? Yeah. yeah like a door opening. Uh -huh. Yeah. Hello? By all means, I'll leave that. I didn't know if it was that little bit. Yeah, bro. What the f? Someone. If there is anybody in here, I'm calling the police. Okay, so just to show you, that's the back door. The back door is bolted 
on both sides. There's bolt one, there's bolt two, and then it's bolted at the bottom. And there's no other way in here. Look, there's no doors back here to get outside. That was That's the only door for this whole theater. This is a theater. This is one of the screening rooms. That's the only exit in this entire room. I'm shaking right now. I've, that's never happened. I heard that too. Yeah, there's, I mean, you guys have walked through here. No, hey. What? Let's, let's continue through this way. Okay, yeah. But I just wanted to show you, like, you've been here, through here a few times now. That's the only door. No, um, nobody, nobody's dude, in that was, can we talk about how literally mentally insane that was? Yeah, that was, that was absolutely nuts. I've never had that happen. We heard the door open and then slam shut. That might have been the fridge. I just told you guys that door slams sometimes, but I have never experienced it. I've only had staff tell me that it's done that. Can you please do that again if that was you? I know you like to scare us, it's okay. I think we heard you slam the door. Could you do that again? I get this thing. No problem. I'm shaking. Me too. I get ringing in my ears and my ears are like all of a sudden, bro. And it's. Do you see my goosebumps, it's bro? So Look at my arm, bro. In here right now. Connor, get this. Look at the actual goosebumps up and down my arm. Yeah, I, I'm telling you guys, I, I don't know what that was. I mean, dude, that was directly right there. A f slamming. I know. And I'm like, I, I pushed the door. You can't move that door, it's double no. bolted. That was legitimately so loud and close to us that I thought someone was breaking in. I know, and that's not a problem around here. Like, they don't experience break-ins or people trying to break in. Like, that doesn't happen here. I'm like freezing cold right now. Me too, I know. man. I know. Let's go ahead and continue. Christ! Um, so when I was coming through here for the first walkthrough, this, like, two by four or whatever, I guess call it like a pillar, I was on this side of it, and I looked, glanced on this side of it, like through here, and where this tree is in this graveyard, to the left of it, under the branch, I saw a little girl about this tall, long black hair, like down to, I'd say, her waist, covering her face, and she was standing there in a, like, I guess it was white skin or a white dress, just standing there like this, and it was so clear to me that I thought it was a prop. I didn't think anything of it. I thought that it was a prop standing there until I got from here and passed and looked again and it was gone. And then I paused and I stopped and I was like, that was not a prop. That was, that was whatever. But that, yeah, that's, that's how clear you'll see stuff in this building. It's yeah. so insanely clear that you'll think that it's a Halloween prop, but it's not. Yeah, uh, this is the skeleton hallway. A lot of times on Spirit Talker, Ovulus, Spirit Box, you'll hear bones, skeleton hallway in this area in the chapel, which always leads up to this. Are you guys afraid of clowns? No. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, clown theater. Yeah, I'm feeling mad uncomfortable, Mike. Me too. Oh yeah. And this is this room is not very friendly to phobias, as you can see. There are clowns. Everywhere. Luckily, I actually like clowns. Good. Like, I'm not 
afraid of this room. I'm not afraid of it either, but I know that there's going to be people that watch this that have phobias of clowns. Yeah. When they ask how many clowns they want here, they just said yes. <laughs> Good meme, bro. And Thanks, they bro. delivered. <laughs> that door slamming was one of the loudest, clearest things that's happened to me in a very long time. That's grade A poltergeist activity. That is the type of paranormal activity that they make movies about. That is completely unexplainable, completely terrifying, and once again, frightening, because when we were heading into that investigation, all that we were thinking about was, if this thing has the power to slam a door and it's, it's known to scratch people, what else could it do? What else could it do to investigators? I know Mike himself was absolutely terrified after that entire thing happened, but we still weren't done with the tour. The last place I want to take you guys is up to the control room. This is central to the... In this is central to the entire haunt. This is where all of the uh, film cameras sat. So I think most of the activity happens in here because it's centralized to all the hot spots in the theater. So I'm gonna take you up there now. Before we move on, I wanna point this out. So remember at the beginning I said I was taking a sh in the death toilet, right? So earlier, all the lights were off down there because a breaker was switched. So I came up here to take a sh and I was sitting in the bathroom and uh, I'm not, I'm literally not f***ing with you. This was unbelievably scary. So I'm in here like this and I hear this. I'm sitting there taking a shit and on the door I hear nails. And I went, Connor, Mike, silence. And then my phone died immediately. Like one, two seconds afterwards. I was like, at least I can read something on my phone. And then boom. So I was just sitting there staring at the f***ing door and I'm like, what the hell's about to happen? And I was in the process of doing my doing my thing, so I couldn't just up and get out, you know? So when I opened the door, I literally was like, I opened it and I sat there like, what the fuck am I gonna see? And I was, I was like, I wish I could film this right now, but my damn phone was dead. And then, yeah, so that was really freaky. And then I come downstairs later on, take a second shit after the other interviews. And of course it's the cursed haunted death toilet. <laughs> yeah, so. I just had to point that out because as a genuine paranormal experience, that was like really scary in there. Yeah, so you Ooh. can see the different control booths. That's the escape room portion. Yeah. Which we've gotten activity in there before. A lot of staff here claim that that's like the most haunted part of the entire theater, but watch your step coming through here. Um, I have yet to experience anything significant on that side. Maybe I just haven't investigated over there enough. So back here is the main control room. And this is where I have had most of my, like, genuinely terrifying experiences in this place. Ooh, this doesn't feel very good. Up here, it's... I don't know. I don't know how to describe it. It just feels different up here. I don't know how you guys are feeling right now, but the energy yeah. is very heavy. Yeah. Um, the first few times that I ever came up here to investigate, uh, there used to be couches where you guys are now. We'd come up here and we'd turn on different devices and I wouldn't get anything up here by myself or with other investigators, but anytime Mandy would come up here, she's like a magnet. I don't know if it's what's here is attracted to her or if it's just her energy in general, but she tends to bring them out a lot here. Um, we have Something seen- Something touching my arm right now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, it's-, it's... I, I can feel my hair moving on my arm and it's ice cold bro mm -hmm. do you see my hair actively I'm not even moving dude on this end the weird Look part is that, dude. most of the heat uh, pumps up yeah, here like we're, we're yeah. super close to the, the central air right now so it's all heat coming out and I can feel a cold draft in between the heat okay, coming that from you is, right now that was really strange just yeah. now yeah it felt like two fingers just like touching you like that. Yeah, so if we come up here um, during our investigation and turn all the lights out, 
there's an exit sign there, an exit, exit sign back there. That column, that support column that you see, mm -hmm. you'll see stuff peek from behind it constantly and look at you. We've seen things crawling on all fours back there, like multiple people have seen something on all fours. I was up here about a month ago cleaning up this area. I was starting here and I was up here by myself. There was nobody else in the building. Uh, I was listening to music, I was hearing things, seeing things, just I don't really pay attention to it anymore because I come here so much. And when I got to this rack here, I was going around it and I forgot a bag, so when I turned back around, I looked right here where I'm sitting and I saw this, I don't know how to describe it, but it almost looked like a human being that was fully hunched over in the fetal position. Its back was textured almost as if like it was like deeply wrinkled skin. It was dark brown, black, it had a bald head, and it had pointy ears. And I have never seen anything like that anywhere else. I haven't seen it since. I only saw it the one time here. And I I mean, it was only for maybe, maybe two seconds, but it well, was where was it? Right here, right in this spot. I rounded that rack turned around and when I turned around it was right here just fully hunched over like this and again people have seen things crawling on all fours in this area so I don't know if it was that like one of the freakiest things that I've ever seen most of my like truly terrifying moments as an investigator have been in this theater based on the things that I've seen the things that I've heard the things that I felt um, it's all happened here me personally, I think this area is the most active area in the haunt, just again, because it's central to the entire theater. All of these little windows here are where all of the active hotspots are. Um, so, I mean, every time I come up here, it's something different. Uh, one of the last times I was here, I brought a friend here. It was just the two of us in the whole building. We sat in those chairs and we were sitting across the room looking this way. I felt like I was gonna pass out from exhaustion, from something, I don't know. It, I've never had such an overwhelming urge to just slump back in my seat and close my eyes and go to sleep while investigating. It almost felt like I, I was like drunk or something. I don't, I don't know any other way to describe it, but I just felt very, very sleepy. And then as soon as we left, I was totally fine again. And it, I don't know if it's something manifested up here, if it's, been here since before the theater maybe and now we're I guess encroaching on its land I don't know if it's inhuman but between the things I have felt the things that I have seen and heard up here the brown cat eared thing that was on the ground here the things that crawl on all fours back there it just gets to be too much most of the time up here. I can't stay up here for more than like 20, 30 minutes unless I'm with people. If I have people with me, it's okay. If it's during the day, it's okay. But if, if you were to ask me to come up here and investigate this area by myself, I, I can't do it. I refuse. It's a free, unlimited source of energy to feed off of the type of energy that it wants. And if you're a negative being, you feed off of fear. Dude, Yeah. the moment that I'm like, almost tripping myself out the moment that I brought that up do you feel like I'm not even talking about cold I'm like fucking energy dude just like came in here and the walls started cracking yes like look us. at look at my goddamn arms dude all of my hair it keeps going up and down it's mental I know it's like it's 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 here dude I know and it knows that we're talking about it we're giving it attention, so it's going to come out. I'm genuinely freaked out. Me too. Man. I don't really get freaked out anymore. I do this all the time. I, I know. was just doing it yesterday in New York, doing it again tomorrow. We did it all weekend with you last weekend. Yeah. I am really freaked out. I'm like, I, I want to do it, but I'm like, like that I door? I don't know if I want to. No, the, do <laughs> like the door, the stories, hearing the, seeing a ghost girl with black hair going like this, a demonic little child. Serial killer spirits. That happens when we're just walking around doing the tour. And you notice how, like, we walked through and I said, I swear if I hear a door open, I'm going <laughs> to sh** my pants. You we did. We walk away. I start hearing a door open. We're like, what the f*** was that? 
You call out, hello? Boom. Yeah. Door slams. But also, consider the fact that if this thing feeds off of fear, it's the off season right now, so it needs fear yeah. and wants fear. It's like a drug But it's like, this it. is, that's also what this thing he- sees and hears all the time, and it knows that it works. Mm-hmm. But that's what I'm saying. It's like an alcoholic needs alcohol. This thing needs fear. You, it heard you say that, and look at your reaction, dude. You could barely even film after that happened. You were so shaken. It you like were just. Enough. It was feeding off of you, bro. It's gonna do it all night. Yeah. I have a feeling it's feeding off me. It knows how to freak me. It's out. feeding off of all of us. Yeah. And and another thing too, um, you've been to the Axe House. Yeah. You know what that place is like. Yeah. That place is really truly one of a kind, and it's. Whatever is there knows exactly how to play on your emotions and fears and feed off of it and, and get you to react so it can get what it wants. Yeah. I think whatever is there, I, I've, I've never tried to like dabble with demons or evil. I just try to stay away from that stuff because it's not really what I like to mess with. But I think that whatever is there is demonic and it does the exact same thing that whatever is here does. Like you're, you're feeling the same thing you're experiencing the same thing. Like you basically gave it an opening. Like, oh, this is what scares you? Watch this. Nothing friendly, I don't, even if it was just being playful, I just don't see something that isn't evil doing something like that to intentionally like drive fear out of you. It loves the reaction. Yeah. It's like someone's blowing cold air out my neck. It's right yeah. here, it's yeah. coming it's, between it's, all of us yeah, That's right what now. I'm saying, dude. And the heat's on. It's like se- when it's we set first to seventy three. It was hot. Yeah. It was hot up here. Yeah. It's not hot up here. Anymore. No, it's freezing cold. Well, let me say one thing for the camera too. Let me remind everybody: it is currently Friday the thirteenth. You cannot make this shit up. When we were driving up here today, I didn't even notice. Yeah. And we're here at the damn scariest place imaginable yeah. on the unluckiest day of the year. Something's, I have a feeling something crazy is going to happen tonight, so I think we should set our stuff up, man. Let's it's almost it. midnight, the witching hour, baby. Yep. Mike, are you ready, my friend? I'm ready, man. Okay. Connor, are you ready? Not a fucking bit. <laughs> okay, guys, so as you saw during that tour, holy f***, I don't know what the f*** that possibly was. That is, like, unbelievable evidence. And it's really scary. This place has all of us on edge. Um, What the f*** was that? I don't know. Uh, This, yeah, we're just really on edge. But we're here tonight. I want to reintroduce Mike. Mike, step on over here. Step on into the frame. Come on over. Mike's our boy. We've been filming a lot with this guy lately. Please go check out Charm City Paranormal. He makes some of the best videos I've ever seen in my life when it comes to the paranormal. No, it's true. And he's so passionate and I feel like we're learning a lot from Mike and he's been such a great host here. You can attest to people that this is fucking scary tonight, right? Dude, this is the scariest place I've ever been. But I mean like the activity tonight is right. It's insane. Like what the hell is happening? We I mean, can't even get through the interviews or like do any of the shots without something happening around us. No, it's like the compounded fear and anxiety like we were talking about of years of this being a haunted house attraction. You can feel that. Standing here, you can feel it. I'm, a, I'm freaked out to go back into the actual theater, but I feel like it's about time to start the investigation. Thanks to you guys who watched all the interviews here. I know some people think there's too much talking, but History is very important, and sometimes in the interviews, you get something like that, which is yeah. why we do the interviews, because that, to me, uh, that's like, that's just insane evidence. Just take a look over here, Connor. Look at what Mike's making us do. Look at how fucking scary that shit looks, man. And here is what it's going to look like when we're walking through it. Solid. Yeah, you see, I don't like that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like that at all, man. The best part, too, is the entire building is powered down. I flipped all the breaker switches. There are almost no possibilities of false positives or anything setting off of our equipment. It's The whole building's powered down. So we're basically walking into the pitch black darkness into a haunted maze full of demons, ghost children, and something that's obviously angry and doesn't like us tonight. Yep. That's what we're about to do. Pretty much. Just an average Friday night. Well, not really. 
Friday the Gotta 13th. love it. <laughs> yeah, and let's not forget once again to point out Friday the 13th. Yep. Unironically, too. We didn't plan this. No. We were just like, this is the day. And I was like, oh, we'll come down on the 13th. Oh, Friday the 13th. Oh, yeah. Just of course. Out. Of course. Here we are. Here we are. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, let's do this, man. We're just trying to put it off. Yeah, we're trying, to, we're trying to do it. <laughs> like, I love, inevitable. I love the paranormal, but honestly, guys, online, if you've never been in a situation like this, I don't think it's possible to comprehend how fucking spooky this, like, legitimately is. Yeah. The spooky-ass thing about doing these haunted mazes, right? You're in a maze. There's no easy exit. When you're in there, it's like a 10-minute walk to get out to like yeah. just an area like this that feels you can't safe. Run. You can't yeah. run. The corners are tight. The hallways are tight. So you also like, don't know what you're going to run into in yeah. front of you. Who knows if you're going to turn around <laughs> the corners, little f***ing Timmy Two Shoes, the ghost boy, stand there with his <laughs> sunken <laughs> sides. I don't know what I'm going to see, man. It just adds a whole nother level of fear to this thing. Yeah. I think we do it. Let's do it. Now, finally, the three musketeers. <laughs> <Let's do it. laughs> okay, boys. The first investigation. So we wanted to start off in the butcher shop. That's where Artie, the worker who passed away inside of the haunted house, that's the area that he used to cover and, and work when he was a actor at the haunted house. And now what's interesting about this that I couldn't stop thinking about is that most of those settings and, and landscapes and everything have been changed throughout the haunted house's existence. I mean, they swap themes every couple months and years. A lot of props are taken in and out, but Artie's Butcher Shop, that part of the haunt, is the only original area within the attraction where nothing has been touched. So it's exactly the way that it looked when Artie himself died in that building. And that's also known to be one of the more active areas. So we decided to set our stuff up in there and um, as you're about to see, yeah, things took off immediately. Look at that, bro. Okay, so for camera, we're starting right now in Artie's Butcher Shop. This is, if you remember, Artie was the employee who died here in the building. And this room has basically remained untouched since his passing. This is like the original setting, original everything. And this thing is absolutely tripping out. This is our proximity meter over there. And you can see it is detecting something on both sides of the meter. Which it should not be. I want to point that out. And we've reset it four times. Yeah, this is, I, I moved it further and further and further away. And it's still doing the same thing. If you're out there, can you step away from this doorway? Okay, so to start this off, we're gonna start here in the butcher shop. We're gonna move on and do the theater area, and then we're gonna head to the cabinet. That's, you know, the haunted object. That's the apex almost of the haunting here in the theater or the haunted attraction. That's where we heard that door slam earlier. We're all a little on edge doing this right now. And then we're gonna go to the control room where the demon supposedly is. I'm rolling on this. We're roll. Whoa! What the? F Artie, is that you? It's me, Mike. I brought some friends here to meet you. To all spirits that are here right now, in the theater, or the haunted house attraction. I think you may have just showed us that you're here, but to properly introduce ourselves, I wanna just come with an open heart. Also, if you're evil or negative, you can scratch me, you can attack me, you can push me. Why does that start happening when you mention that? Dude, that's going crazy too. Yeah, that's actually yeah, if you want to do it, I am openly inviting you to tonight. I'm not afraid of you. If this is Artie, I know you're a scare actor. And you like to scare people, so tonight, why don't you try even harder to scare us? You have to do better than that, buddy. 
We want to be scared. If that's what you like to do to people, just come scare us. You did a great job earlier by slamming that door. That's exactly what we want to happen again tonight. Did you hear the voice? Yeah. I did too. Did it sound like a, like a girl or a mm -hmm. woman? Okay, but also, what the f*** is going on with that thing? Uh, right you. when I said you can scratch me. So we've got, obviously, REM pods that... It's cold right here, dude. It's cold right when I put my hand out. Oh, I feel it. I'm standing right next yeah. to it. We've got tons of devices in here. The music box, the REM pod. Can you walk up towards us? We have a lot of little toys. If you see any of our lights, just walk up to them and we'll be able to see that you're here with us. Can you let us know that you're here somehow? Thank you. Yep. Can you walk even closer? Sounds like somebody cleared their throat out there. Are you out there? In the voodoo area? I have this little tool, a toy, that it should be able to tell. No fucking way that that just died, bro. Isn't that a fresh battery? That was a fresh fucking battery. Yeah, because you were talking about how. That was just 90%. Yeah. Dude. That was our last battery. And this is our first investigation scene. The first time we're using that battery. I just plugged that in. It's yeah, completely on. dead. Completely you dead? Yeah, it's totally dead. <laughs> wow. Well, that's great. Remember me just saying it's 90%? Hardy, are you taking other? battery to be able to communicate with us? Can you set off that device on the bench there if, if you are? I left you several devices out that you can use to gain energy. Why, why would you take battery from our equipment? I'm family. Maybe it's rich. I'm family. When you rich, smell, are you here with us? Didn't you smell smoke in here? This is where usually people smell cigarette smoke. I have a feeling that this is something that is not, not good. Can you set off that light or walk towards us again? Do what you just did? If you consider yourself to be evil? Or negative? Mabel. Mabel! No. It is Mabel, dude. Dude, that's what I'm saying. Right. That's the fourth time now. And dude, and that's on ours, too. Uh, that's that's all... right. That's me. In 1931, Dr. Coggins' wife, Mabel Coggins, um, unfortunately took her own life in one of the wards. And we have had her come through here and it's almost every time that she gets brought up, activity seems to spike in the building. So this is Artie's. This is Artie's butcher shop. Mabel, Artie, and Rich all come through in this room in particular. Dude, we just did a whole interview about that. I know. <laughs> One of the first thing, I'm family and Mabel. Isn't that Pops crazy? Up. Yes. Mabel, can you come forward and speak with us for a little while? We just, we want to talk to you and learn more about you. I've never really gone in depth with you and learned your story. We just, we haven't had a chance to speak with you on a more personal level. I want to know why you chose to do what you did. That's wild. That's absolutely insane, dude. Within five, 10 minutes of starting the investigation, we have corroborated your story. Phil. Device. 
Mabel, if you're here with us right now, can you make come close to one of these lights that we have set up on the the tables over here? We want to know that you're here with us. Skeletons. Green eyes. Oh, what the f***, dude? We're in unison right now. Thank okay. you, Mabel. Thank you so much. Skeletons, green eyes. Both REM pods. I haven't really paid attention to either of you have green eyes. No. no. Okay. They're blue. I don't know if maybe it was like trying to correlate something towards you or one of you. Mabel, did you have green eyes? Can we also acknowledge? Bear. There. Dude. Are you standing there? You're doing great. Those REM pods also just showed the validity of the spirit talker because we got a response on this one and this one at the exact same time that both REM pods went off. Yeah. Same with this. There's an energy that's right here. I keep hearing stuff out there. I don't feel like it's Mabel, though. Witchcraft. The voodoo? <laughs> yeah. Right. The voodoo room, and as I'm talking about hearing stuff out there. You wanna walk out there? Yeah, let's do it. Please leave Polly. here. Please leave here. The moment we left, dude. Oh. Wow. The, the moment that we got out of the room. Please leave here. Gaining more energy. Right now. Okay. And it drained the battery. Oh my god, I just got. Did you hear that? I'm. I have f goosebumps, bro. This is. Okay, so what I was saying is, it doesn't feel to me like Mabel, even if it's acting like Mabel, because it knows you trust Mabel mm -hmm. as a good spirit. Yeah. It's or or Mabel's here and saying, leave here now. It's gaining more energy. Look at what. F happened the moment I said scratch me attack me the thing went off I'm telling you whatever's here is not the good spirit evil, evil! Oh, shit. I'm trying to not get so hyped tonight I know people were like <laughs> but but I mean that's tired the timing is insane I literally was saying What's here is the moment I was saying negative, evil. I'm telling it's almost like one, one spirit nice is Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Now it's you. trying to get our trust. Yeah, dude. Dude. It's, it's almost like whatever's here is, there's that one, that one good entity. You know, Mabel, maybe. We'll yeah. say it's Mabel, who you know need to leave here gaining energy the moment I say it's I feel like it's night evil right there it's almost like she's saying now something's coming in and I'm feeling it Viking Viking she talking about you look at me dude it may be taunting me the one thing is people always call me Thor yeah. Every, everywhere I go they yeah. say you look like Thor and that's not it's just a thing that happens yeah. Courtney and my wife and I laugh about it all the time because people will just come up and say you look like Thor. And my my mom's maiden names are Thorson and Erickson. The most, I'm mm. Norwegian. Yeah. So maybe it's saying it's targeting me when I asked it to. Yeah. I was the one that asked. Yeah, it's very specific. When have we gotten Viking? When have we been to a place? I just said yes. I didn't even know that was set up. Me either. <laughs> Again? No. Let me ask you if you're in there. Are you trying to target me? Because I invited you to? Insight. 13. 13. 13th. Yeah. I also have a 13th tattoo. I have three of them. Yeah. If you. Let me see if you're trying to scare me right now. 
You could really do it by touching one of those red lights like you were doing. How about you walk up towards one of them and just grab them? You can do it, just walk. Movement in there. Yeah, just walk up. Do you feel a cold draft from in here? Oh, right back here, on my hands right now. I can feel it on my knuckles and my fingers. I know you. I know you. The moment we walk in. Are you talking to Mike? Are you talking about me? It's nice to see you again. Our boy just said yes. I lost my life here. Oh no. Artie, is this you? Oh, yeah. We heard your story today. We're really sorry that that happened to you. If this is you, can you come grab one of these red lights again? My anxiety is coming back. How is that possible? Two REM pods at the same time turning on and turning off. I don't know. At the same time. Good and grace. Good and grace. Oh, look at the cat ball. The cat ball is going off. Good and grace. Both positive words. I was a witch. I was a witch? I've never Resemble. seen that. The cat ball. Okay, we got That wasn't me. No, oh, I know. Were you a witch? Were you summoned through a ritual? Communicate. I'm angry. Oh, and the f cat ball. So you were. You... Whoa, that was loud. Answer. It's like there's your answer. Dude, what the f? I'm angry. I was a witch, witchcraft. I was. Destroy. Once again, dude. Evil words, bro. Evil words. And I'm feeling, I'm feeling weird now. I'm super cold. I can feel that draft all the way over here. Eel. There's a crazy draft coming in. I feel it. I lost my here. life here. Again? Again? Yeah. Something interesting. When we talk about it being evil, it responds with good words. It goes, good, grace, positive. I died here. It's like trying to make us think it's something else, but it's obviously really powerful and it's, it's freaking us out. I feel like it's drawing us in. We should go further in. What do you guys think? This is just the first room. It gets worse the further in we go. That's what I'm saying. Pack it up and move on. Wrong. Wrong. Ooh. Ooh. I've never seen anything like this. As soon as you talk about moving further in, it really is. Whatever's here is happened here. 
happened here? I said the word here, and it immediately said that. <laughs> Weird. I think whatever's in this room, it m Look at the f***ing cat ball, too. Cross. Cross. I swear you scratched. <laughs> Cross scratches, huh? I think whatever's in this room is a good spirit. I'm not that free. Myself. But it really is. Every time we talk about moving on, it's like, don't. Mm -hmm. But that's why I say we need to. Yeah. We need to find whatever's here tonight because that's what made that noise. Yeah. Whoever's in here, Artie, if that's you. No. I feel like whatever's here is the thing that made the door slam, but that's the energy that I want to capture on camera. Because mm -hmm. I love good energy, but I want to hear that. Elsewhere. Door. Elsewhere. Most of the time, the, the main three that come through in here, it's Artie, Rich, and Mabel. Or at least whatever is claiming to be one of those three. That said yes. <laughs> I'm, my mind is a little blown right now. Damn, it's going all the way to purple. Is that you, Rich? Artie? Mabel? Sarah. And the cat ball? Rich, if that's you, can you come up and touch this red light? She scares me. She scares me. This one with the little girl. Oh, that gave me a chill. Mm -hmm. I'll take this. <gasps> oh, both of them again. Oh, what the different f level. What is going on? The cat ball. And then it just stops. Wait. Cold. I heard a whistle or a voice back there. What I was going to say though is these responses perfectly align with what we were saying. There's somebody in. Power. Yes. There's somebody in here that is afraid of what's out there and they don't want us to go out there. And they said. Dude. And they said, she scares me. Who watching. is. Watch. They're watching out for us. They're watching us right now. Let me ask you. I think you're a good spirit in here. Who scares you? Can you tell us who scares you? What was that? Fatal. Fatal? It was so loud. She's she? fatal? Fatal. Is she gonna hurt me? Who is she? Old. She's old? Tell us one last thing about her. We'd love to know her name. That's insane. Is it really a girl? Or is she pretending to be a girl? She's pretending to be a girl. Mm -hmm. It's not a little girl, is it? I don't think so. I don't think the children's spirits Shadow. are here. Shadow. Are actually children. Shadow, bro. I know. What did you see in there? John. Ron? I got two. All right, man. I think we got to pack up and go to another room. It's been yeah. 40 minutes in here already. Yeah. Right. Okay, thank you for trying to protect us. We just want to talk to whoever's here. So, unfortunately, we have... In heaven. I feel like someone just touched my elbow right here. I'm not saying that. And in heaven? It's weird, too. But... 
we're going to pack our stuff up. You can follow us, and if you want to keep trying to help us, follow us deeper into this building. Okay? But thank you. But whoever's the evil one here, I want to see you. I want to feel you tonight. So come on out to play. Let's pack up and move on. But I'm with God. Don't leave. What? what? Did you pause it? No, I'm still rolling. Don't leave. The f moment that we pack up, bro. Has He's coming. No. Wow. I got chills right now, like hardcore. I am full body goosebumps, bro. Yeah, me too. Dude. We're literally saying, like, it doesn't want us to leave this room. Don't leave. She's coming. I'm afraid of her. Who is she? I guess she's coming. Fatal. Fatal. We're gonna meet her face to face, and what's f***ing Mike seen it over there? The same room where the door slammed? Mm -hmm. He saw this girl. Yep. Who is she? The f*** is she? This is a very serious ghost hunt. I'm very freaked out, dude. Yeah, man. Okay, let's cut now. This. House. No, not here. No, not here. Oh, man. I'm gonna leave the. I'm gonna leave the statics on though. That's me. That was me. Oh. What the hell is going on in here, dude? I don't know. Have you seen this before? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like it. No, but you've seen multiple. Yes. We've had, I've had a REM pod, a REM master, and a music box, and a cat ball on that table over there go off all at the same time. So after the butcher shop, we had a lot of ground to cover, but keep in mind it was already 1 a.m. <laughs> we filmed until 5 a.m. that night, actually. And we wanted to go check out one of the more authentic rooms in the building, a room where people have seen so many different things, where people have experienced so many different things, a room where violent paranormal activity is known to occur. And that room would be the only original theater in the building from the movie theater days that still had all those seats. All right, so we're set up in the theater right now. And as you can see behind us, the uh, music box that was silent the entire time we were <laughs> in the other room is now spiking or detecting some sort of object in front of it. Is that you out there? Are you following us? Something followed us, but we're gonna do a DR60 in here and uh, Wanna follow me, Connor? Yeah. Oh, hey. <laughs> hey. <laughs> hey. You ready to start? Yeah. 
So Mike said that they don't like when you uh, play the piano, right? You wake them up a little bit. Yeah, they, for some reason, every time we mess with it in here, it gets a little more active than usual. Well. Maestro. <laughs> What's that over there? Did you hear that? You hear how much the music box is going on? You don't like that? Mike, behind you! You guys ready? Yeah. Let's do it in here. All right. So we've been hearing a lot about this uh, this girl or she who is dangerous. Some of the spirits in here are warning us about this woman or this girl who uh, may not be human or may hurt us. Once again, if that's you that I'm talking to. You can come through and uh, speak with me. You can also scratch me, push me. I don't care what you want to do to me, but you can do something. And if you're a good spirit, you can talk to us too. My name's Colin. I'm Connor. And I'm Mike. Can you tell us your name? Do you not like us being here? Who's the one trying to warn us? Is there someone or something evil in this building? Something dark, a demon? Who slammed that door earlier? Which Samuel is here? Can you say one of our names? Colin, Connor, or Mike? Who's the little boy? Who's the entity that resides in the control room? Apparently you're angry. Why are you so angry? Are you someone who died here? Are the stories of the overdoses and the shootings in this theater true? Can you say one of our names? Call 
Colin, Connor, or Mike? Who's the little boy? Can you say one of our names? Colin, Connor, or Mike? Who's the little boy? Who's the entity that resides in the control room? What? Apparently you are angry. Why are you so angry? Are you someone who died here? Are the stories of the overdoses and the shootings in this theater true? I heard yes. Yeah. There's a lot there. It was hard to make out a lot of it, but mm -hmm. it's almost like every question we ask, except for maybe two or three of them, there was an answer to all of them. Yeah. I mean, we'll have to go back and, and listen, but yeah. I honestly think that we should go back to the area where we heard the uh, the door slam. Yeah, I think so too. You guys ready? Yeah. Ready. I'm ready. Let's do it. <laughs> Thank you to anyone in here, but I want to meet the little girl. So follow us in there if you're here. If you can hear my voice, meet us by the cabinet. So after the DR-60 in the theater, we knew that it was time to go face our fears and to go visit the most, what some would call, cursed room in the haunted house, the area where earlier we had heard that loud, violent door slamming, and that area would be the cabinet area. Now, if you'll remember, so many different instances of paranormal activity reported in that room. There have been scratches in the shape of upside down crosses. There have been people pushed. Things have been thrown off the walls. In our own video, we heard a door violently slamming shut from that area. We think it was the fridge. And so, yeah, we were definitely a little on edge to head down there, especially based on how much activity we had already recorded in the building. And for me personally, it was a really, really, um, really bad vibe in that building. It was, it was an energy that you can't really explain, but it was, it just felt like it didn't want us in there. And I personally was scared just walking through the building. One thing about the haunted house, like I, I believe I've said, is that once you're in there, when you're investigating in one of those areas, you're in a maze. So if something happens and it goes south, you can't just leave the building. You have to actually grab all of your stuff, pack it up, and then walk all the way through those tight hallways. Let's say an evil demon with bloody teeth and glowing yellow eyes jumps out from down one of the hallways and shoves you against the wall. You can't just, you know, make a quick escape. You have to actually attempt to escape like in a horror movie. And that thought just kept playing over and over again in my mind. And we had no idea what was about to happen. All right, everybody, real quickly. So you know that we give away a free gift bag every week. It comes with Paranormal Files goodies, a signed picture, all of that. This week, all you have to do to enter the competition is like tonight's video, make sure and hit that thumbs up button and comment, let's go to hell. I know that's a little extreme, but I just thought it would be funny based on the subject matter of tonight's video. So go like the video, comment, let's go to hell. I'm gonna give you 10 seconds. 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Once again, thank you all so much for watching the videos, for supporting the channel. We have some amazing big name content coming soon, some amazing collabs coming up in the next few months with some friends that you guys know and love. And yeah, this is gonna be the best year in the history of the channel and I cannot thank you all enough for watching and enjoying these videos. I hope you, you've enjoyed yourself. Hello to the Spooky family. I love you guys, you know I do so much. And uh, yeah, let's get back to the video and stay spooky. All right, to whoever slammed that door earlier, if this is you, all we want to do is talk to you. I know you try to present as a very negative being, but you can't scare us, all right? All we want to do is hear you do something like that. Again, you can play with that flashlight back there. I know you know what a flashlight is. 
Can you make another noise for us? We want to hear you move around in here. We're going to sit silently for a second. Positive. We know you are more of a negative spirit. So let's be truthful here to ourselves. One of the first times I ever came here, I saw you over in the graveyard. You presented Lord. yourself. You presented yourself as a little girl. Is that what you really are? Cheers. Yeah, you can come over by the chairs if that's what you want to do. That's where we're sitting. Mm -hmm. We have another chair over here open for you. We welcome you to sit down with us to have conversation so we can figure out what you are. Come on, let's be real here. Are you evil? Are you a demon? If you touch that red light again, we'll turn the lights off. Maybe then you can show up. My ears ringing. Filming. <laughs> wow. Yeah, we do have six cameras rolling right now. We're filming. Do you get enjoyment out of scaring people? It would really scare the hell out of me if I heard your voice. Honestly, if I were to hear a spirit voice right now, it would scare the shit out of me. I think I, I would have to leave. I'd shit my pants. <laughs> she died. Who is she? Is she the little girl? Yeah, we're back talking to she. Mm -hmm. Are you the little girl that died in the accident here when the theater was being renovated? That was good. Can you do that again? Come in here and come talk to us. Here. It's okay, these are my friends. They're not gonna hurt you. You know who I am. I come here a lot. I wouldn't bring anybody here that would cause you harm. You can trust me and you can trust them. It's getting colder. Dude, it's cold from this direction. I feel on my whole body right now. Come in here and come talk to us. You should run your spirit talker too. Okay. Oh, she just came in. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> if you come up to this box on the table here, you can pull energy from it so you can talk Attachment. to us. Mm, I don't think it's... Did you hear that? It's us. Whoa. Right as you said that too. I heard, I heard behind me. Hey. Yeah. Hey, little girl. Hey. Yeah. She's usually heard more than she's seen here. The other entity was saying. She's dangerous. Yes, yeah, we need to be afraid of her. So she presents for. I understand what you say. She's listening to us right now. They know that we know. Yeah. So you're not a little girl, huh? Why don't we be honest? What are you? It's, it's a way colder, bro. I know. It's like under the table. Yeah, yeah. I feel on my legs, dude. <laughs> and that happens when you're in this room as time passes. The temperature just drops and drops and drops. And it gets so cold in here that you can't bear it. I feel like we need to go lights out, dude. 
Let's do it. Okay. Turn your light off. Noise. Noise. Are you gonna make another noise? There it was. That door was amazing earlier. You scared the hell out of us. You want fear? Do something that's gonna make us fearful. Do you want us to turn off the lights? We'll get really scared if you touch that red light right there or tell us something. Maybe shut off the flashlight. We'll turn off the lights. Get out of here. Someone's coming. Get out of here. Someone's coming. Yeah. It's a protective spirit. Yeah. But they're saying, now we stay. The last time we came to find it, mm -hmm. now we f***ing stay here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Where are you? Mess. to this. It makes me really uncomfortable. Are you afraid? Not yet. I want to be afraid. Mm -hmm. I feel like you and I are hearing the same like weird shit going on right now. Uh-huh. Just like chatter too. It's like a mix of that and, and talking. He will touch you. It's it's in the same spot. It's near it's in between the graveyard and the church. It's like going back and forth. Jacob. Ooh. That's a that's a very like active spirit here. We get that name a lot here. Jacob? Yeah, and I don't know if that's the little boy or not, but that name comes through here almost every time I'm here. This camera's about to die. Watch out. Whoa. Watch out for what? For Jacob? Is Jacob the little boy? Fearful. How about we go lights out? Will you do something for us? Figure. Yeah, I'd love to see a figure. Alright, you guys ready to go lights out? Let's do it. Turn this flashlight off too. Alright! We turn the lights off. I'm happy. Whoa. Sacrifice. Look at this. Moving above my head. See my shadow. Did any of you touch the table? No. Can you just make a noise for us? Be fearful. Tap. Be fearful. Keep asking. Can you give us a little bit more than that? Even if it's not the little girl, if it's someone else that slammed that door. If you're listening right now, can you make a similar noise? 
I feel like you're being very quiet now that we're here. Could you just come up to the table? Just let us know that you're here with us somehow. She's coming. She screams. Did you use up all of your energy slamming that door? She died. She? Who is she? You know what, guys? I say we do. We go up to the control room and do an Estes. We'll do a dual Estes. Okay. So, I feel like you and I have had a connection all night. And... We're gonna go up to the control room up there. She's coming, she died. Who is she? That's our goal tonight is to figure out what you are. You made your presence known with the door slamming. Come up to the control room. Let's have a conversation, all right? I think this is, uh, I feel it. I feel it, bro. It's wild up there, man. It's tough. My neck. <laughs> what do you guys think? I'm ready. Let's do it. I think she's coming. So after our time at the cabinet, um, we decided that we wanted to go see if we could meet this evil thing face to face in the control room area. Now this is where Mike, if you remember, has seen something with wrinkly skin, um, others have seen this large shadow figure. People have been once again attacked up there, heard all sorts of noises. And this area sits in the very middle of the theater with open windows leading into every room. So if there is a spirit there, it could come from any part of the theater. It's like a central point where all these, these areas kind of intersect. But we wanted to do something different. So if you remember in our first Gettysburg episode, we did a dual Estes session. The results were absolutely insane. If you haven't seen that video, I would highly recommend you go check it out now. Um, so we wanted to do another dual Estes. And I'm gonna bring you guys now to that exact moment in the theater when we sat alone in the dark with what some would call a demon. Okay, everybody, so it's 4.30 a.m. We're here upstairs in the control room. What Mike said is the most evil, most haunted part of this entire building complex. We've got a bunch of devices set up up here. We've got two REM pods, a multitude of IR cams. In real life, it's pitch black in here, and this is the scariest, <laughs> supposedly, place in the building. And if any spirit has been trying to contact us, she is what we're calling her tonight. The demon, the the evil thing that's been following us, she's gonna be able to come up here. Just like Gettysburg, we're doing the dual Estes, where Connor and Mike are gonna be going under and doing the Estes method. I'm gonna be asking the questions. Here are the guys. We'll be doing the answers. <laughs> at it again. Are you guys ready? Ready. Put the blindfolds on. Yeah, it's pitch black. It is very spooky in here. I'm gonna turn both spirit talkers on. We've got a REM pod right here, one right up there. All right. What the f I want to know who she is. Do it. Who is she? That. At the butcher. No. You. It's not the butcher. Who's the girl? Show. Yeah, I want you to show me who you are. Who's the girl that everyone's been warning us about? You know. Feeling. I do know the feeling of the negativity. Get us. I'm here. Okay, you guys are here. Who are you? What are you? It's Please. the grand scheme. You will see. Sit. 
<laughs> I am sitting. We're all sitting. How many spirits are in this theater? Please help. Bitch. Why are you so angry? Pissing me off. <laughs> me? I'm making you mad? Settlement. Yeah. Don't. Don't do hurt what? Me. Don't hurt you. I'm not trying to hurt you. I'm just trying to figure out who you are. Do you have a name? Everything. No, I can't. Push. So, why are you here? Stop. I'm stuck. Contain. So you're stuck here, you're contained here. But what are you? Are you demon. a demon? I'm unstoppable. So you are what you would call a demon. Can you say yes? Coming. Can you say yes if you're a demon? Many other souls. Yes. Yes. Many other souls. So do you like scaring people? Why are you here? Here. I know you're here, but why? Kill. Whoa. Day. That's how I'm evil. Kill. Scared. So you like making people scared. And you want to kill somebody. You're mine. Dude, what the f***? Told you. <laughs> what did you tell me? Hate. Hate. We have power. We have power. How many people are here? How many entities haunt this place? Great. Seven. <laughs> Seven, okay. I know there's... Thirty. Thirty. What do you want? Lisa. Lisa on TV. God. You want God. You're not going to get God, though. What can I do for you? Kill. <laughs> Colin. Whoa. That was, dude, that was clear as day. Colin. Colin. Kill Colin. Kill Colin. Bad. Oh. Well, I'm hearing noises around here. Are you here with me right now? F for a period. Why do you want to... Something sin. is touching my leg right now. Why do you want to hurt me? You piss me off. Opposite. <laughs> hurt you. I'm sorry, I just have to ask the hard questions. Where did you come from? How did you end up here, I guess? There's that... Creation. World or portal, one of the two. Creation and portal. Okay, that's... Weird. Make it stop. Evil. Ah, something's like... Do you see something touching my leg? Something like pricked me in the face just I'm now. agitated. I'm agitated. There's like, like something touching this side face. of my leg. They're mm -hmm. both being affected right hurt now. Hurt them. Yeah, that hurt. To Grove. Where do you like to hang out? It said something about Connor. Cool. <laughs> do you like when people come to talk to you? Uh-uh. <laughs> Go. <laughs> so you don't like the fact that we're here? Ow, it did it in my ankle too. It's like a pinprick or They're something. They're both being physically affected right now. It won't stop there. <laughs> Corey or Courtney? You're going to haunt me? Is that what you're saying? You're going to follow me? Him. Him. So what do you want? I want a something to you. Spirit. What do you want to do? Be more clear. I heard you say I want to. Out. Out. 
You want us to leave? Hurt. This. You're scared. <laughs> I'm Do not it. scared. You said you want to hurt me. You hang. Wanna... Oh. You want to hang? Kill your whole family. You Creep. see me. Twenty. Well, you can't kill my whole family. That's not going to happen. And I don't see you. <laughs> oh. Can you show yourself to me? I'd like to see you. It's just yeah. me and you. Yeah. Do it then. Where are you? Too easy. Son. Ow, dude. I keep getting these fucking pinpricks in my, like, my body. Something has pricked That's... me like three times now. That is really strange, man. Both of them feeling the same type of pain. There's something like tugging on my pants. Are you affecting these guys? Serum. Why? People. Why are you so angry? Watch this. I'm watching. Loud. Something just screamed. I don't feel or see you. Where are you? Are you powerful or not? Walk towards one of these red lights. The forest. Walk towards one of these red lights, can you? Camera. Let me hear you. Darkness. What's your name? I'm gonna slow the sweep down a little bit. So what do you want? Your mind. You want my mind? You tested me. I did test you, but I'm sitting here and... You f***ed up. No, I didn't. Now we're coming for you. Do it. I don't Better run. <laughs> I don't see you anywhere. I'm strong. I'm spiritually... Dude, I just he heard, like, me. not like a radio station, but like a... Like a sound inside of the headphones. There's a couple like, of them. I'm strong. Teach them. Dude, there's people like touching me all over my me body. Me too. Man. It's fire. Come. I'm not coming anywhere. I'm They're spiritually strong. And you don't scare me. You did nothing to scare me tonight. <laughs> Even tomorrow, I'm protected. I'm sorry. We're going for him. Come for me. Michael. Hmm. What's his name? Kill you. You're very negative. Why? Why are you so negative? Terrified. You make it work. You want to scare me? <laughs> Dude, that's the fourth time now. Burial. I told you, don't go over there. Yeah, I got like now goosebumps you right now. It's like someone's like, like poking all over my body right now. I think you're affecting them more than me. I think you're weaker than you like to make yourself seem. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> you are. Sorry, but where's you Chris? This is creepy, dude. I'm sorry, but you can't follow us home. You gotta stay here. Try and Burial. Okay, we got burial on both devices last. Whoa. Right, he's standing there. Where are you standing? Can you show me? It's like you said. Touch that red light over there. You can't there scare so me. Strong. Yeah, you can't scare <laughs> me. Again. All right, well, it's getting late, so I'm going to tell these guys that it's over. Yeah, right. It's over. You really pushed it. Yeah, I did. But... We want... Disagree. <laughs> kill them. Burn them. Die. <laughs> Three, four, five times. I know you're negative, but... Unfortunately... Whoa! Surprise! 
Yeah, surprise. Hey, I you said we're over here. You weren't. Twelve hundreds. Look back, prick. <laughs> Look back. Coming up. Coming up. We're not I'm saying a lot anything now. anymore. I don't know what you did, but they're saying a lot now. I didn't do anything. <laughs> Trying to scare me, I guess. What the? F do you have anything left to say? No. <laughs> Pack it up. All right. Well, I'm gonna end it with these guys. Kill this motherfucker. Oh, oh shit! Oh, sorry. Oh, hey. Oh God. Clark. Oh. Dude, someone's like touching me that whole time. Yeah, you what both did you were getting say touched. To them? I didn't say anything. I just said I'm protected. I'm strong. You can't affect me. They are pissed. They yeah, are they're so pissed they can't pissed. get to me, man. They they they're like been touching just like, all over my body. They they kept pricking me. Like it felt like a, a thumbtack or a needle was stabbing me in the skin like four times. And they were just they like I didn't even want to say them all because it was just constant like swears. Yeah, you guys are both being touched. <laughs> yeah, Did yours swear a lot? A little. No, Mine was whole constantly lot. swearing. Like it f bombs, at, like constantly. It was kind of hard for me to focus because I was getting like touched the whole. F time. I kept feeling sh jab me. Like Mine I, wasn't like jabbing me. It was like something was like, like pulling on me. Like, yeah, I felt that a few times too. But the ones that really got me were like I'd be in the middle of trying to focus on something and it would just, help. I'd feel like a stabbing sensation. I didn't feel that. And I heard my name. It was I remember like saying was like my name teasing twice. My, like teasing me the whole time. That was fucking scary. It seemed dude. to be affecting you guys more than me. I've never done an Estes up here, let alone a dual one. That was weird. Yeah, dude. Well, I gotta say, I think we're stronger than whatever the evil is here. I know we are. Yeah. And I also gotta say, it's 5 a.m. Jeez. Damn. So why don't we pack this up and talk yeah, about all yeah. this later, huh? Yeah. Please. <laughs> that was crazy, oh, man. All They're right. aggressive as shit. So at the end of the day, Laurel's House of Horrors blew me away. I can honestly tell you that coming to the investigation, I didn't expect very much to happen based on what we had just experienced in Gettysburg with Connor being scratched, the oppression that we had felt all week. Finally, I started to feel better that night. So after going through all of that, I thought nothing can scare me. And boy, was I really, really wrong about that because holy shit, when that door slammed shut, that was an event that happened at the beginning of the night and it influenced our mindset all the way to the end of the night um, in the fact that it scared the hell out of us and none of us were comfortable because we didn't know what was there lurking in the shadows. Now, I think if you notice in this episode, you can also notice that we've been using our new camera. Thank you guys for allowing us to purchase this new camera. We've been using it the whole last trip. We filmed four videos in Baltimore, including this one, and it is just so amazing. We also use the camera slider in this video with some of those nice, really slow shots. We've been trying as hard as we can to upgrade the quality of the videos. And you know, it's just me editing, working everything, Connor filming, my dad filming with me, helping set some stuff up. I think we walked away just completely, um, if we're gonna be honest, shocked by what had just happened that night, the amount of activity, the different activity, the answers, the responses we were getting. It was scary as hell. I, I can tell you that. I was genuinely, um, for the first time in a while, on edge from the beginning of the night to the very end of the night. I, I can look back and honestly tell you that that place is haunted. If you go, 
I would highly recommend you go visit. Maybe you can get a tour from Mike himself. I know he leads some of those tours. Um, so you can go say hi to Mike from Charm City Paranormal. But I think the big takeaway is that the world is just mysterious, isn't it? And we don't always understand all the things that happen all the time. We may think we do, but we don't. I'm not going to be the person that tells you exactly what to think or what to believe in. I'm just here to document my crazy experiences and share them with y'all. I still personally do not believe in the traditional demon. I use it more as a blanket term now to cover these negative energies, anomalies, entities that don't really qualify as a spirit, if you know what I mean. And I'm still learning things every day. I'm still learning things every time I go film. So I'm just glad to have you all along for the ride. But from here in Philadelphia, it's Colin. We have an amazing series in Tennessee coming up. We're gonna be filming seven absolutely nuts videos. Until next time, y'all, thank you for watching. It's Colin here, and uh, as always, we'll see you next week, and stay spooky. Hello! <laughs>